Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We appreciate you taking time to be with us today. No matter if you're a longtime viewer of the 700 Club Canada or maybe you're checking us out for the first time, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Today you'll see how a convicted felon's life was radically changed thanks to the faith and prayers of his mother. Way to go, moms. <laughs> and we have an incredible story of one woman caught in the sex trafficking industry who found freedom with one simple prayer. It's really powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, God never ceases to amaze, and both of these stories are powerful reminders that in any situation, give it to God. Why must we come to the end of ourselves, Brian, and give it to God? Because we've got to exhaust every option that we know. Sure, it doesn't work, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when we get to the end of ourselves, we're at the beginning of God. Yeah, that's what so true. What about yourself? Oh, I think that's so true. I think, unfortunately, some it takes us long, some longer than others to get to the end of themselves. Yes. Right? I just say, get to the end of yourselves as quick as possible yeah. and realize that God is the one who's got this. Yeah. Yeah, and it actually gives you such more uh, freedom it does. in your life. You don't try to, you know, in some ways overcomplicate over, it. Yeah, I, mean, I was gonna say overachieve, but you're yeah. right, overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. It's the kiss theory, you know, and uh, keep it simple, smart guy. Oh, is that what it smart is? Girl. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, and go to God first. Go to God first. Well, also on today's program, Dr. Sasha High wraps up her Life in Balance series with some final thoughts on the overweight battle. Mm hmm it's been powerful, mm -hmm. and it's been a great way to kick off the new year, and we hope it has helped you on your way to living your best life. Absolutely, and to kick things off, this is David's wild ride to finally living his best life. Pretty cool. It was built in me to win every time. You don't lose. David Herabedian's drive to win came from his father, a coach and world-class diving champion who pushed him to be his best. I was co-captain of the wrestling team, and I'd come home, and he said, how you do? I said, well, I, I pinned him. And he said, uh, what round? Well, second round. You let him get out of the first round. His dad wasn't the only one he worked hard to impress. Always the outsider. He measured his self-worth by what other people had. If they had the girl, if they had, you know, the car or all that stuff, they somehow were accepted because they had that stuff. And I wanted that. But once I got it, it didn't mean anything. So now I must need something else. In college, he worked several jobs trying to keep up with his peers. He had money, but no time to enjoy it. That only isolated him more, and he became bitter. So I constantly missed the fun. I missed the excitement. I missed being accepted. And I thought to myself, these other kids get these allowances from their parents to go out and do these things. I have to work. But here's where it flipped. I'm the guy who's doing everything the right way, and it's not working. And I said, that's it. Nice guys finish last. I'm no longer going to be the nice guy. When David was 19, one of his friends told him they could make easy cash selling cocaine. On his work break one night, David and his friend made a deal in the parking lot. The first transaction that I did was two grams of cocaine for two $100 bills, and the whole transaction took two minutes. And I made more in that transaction in two minutes than I made working part-time hours that whole week while going to college. And I remember the moral compass flipping back and forth, thinking, I just did a drug deal. I need to stop. But the promise of easy money was intoxicating. He dropped out of college, learned the business, and was soon making $20,000 a month. And I'm like, wait a second, this is a whole different world, and I liked it. I wanted the finer things, and I just didn't want a suit. I wanted the Armani or the Versace or, you know, whatever it was. He started a legitimate venture, a chain of watch stores, trying to convince himself that one day he'd quit the drug business altogether. There was always the conviction I did not want to go deeper. I wanted to believe a lie that I wasn't going into the drug business for life. I was going into the drug business to make enough money to take the money out to go make my life. His mother had been praying for him to turn to God, and she had suspicions about his involvement with drugs. One day, she confronted him about it. 
David, of course, denied it. So I deflected the confrontation in that moment, but I remember walking out thinking, I really need to stop this business. This is not honoring to my parents. This is not what they raised me to be. I'm, I'm risking ruining the family name, you know, for money. David also started to take a hard look at what was at risk. Prison time, you can't buy your way out of these things. It could be life or death on the tarmac of an airport. You could get killed during a drug deal. You could get robbed. And I remember thinking to myself, this is no longer fun. I want out of this. He decided one last big score would be enough to get out for good. So he agreed to broker a deal trading stolen airplanes for cocaine and cash. He didn't know the feds were watching. In 1989, he got busted and was sentenced to 22 years. I remember it was cold. And I remember being strip searched. And uh, I'm standing there naked. And I thought, I have really hit rock bottom, and now I'm getting ready to go down the tier to my prison cell in Leavenworth Penitentiary. And I remember thinking to myself, how far have I really fallen? Both his cellmates had become Christians and tried to talk to him about Jesus, but he wanted nothing to do with God. Then months later, a visit from his mother changed his thinking. My mother looked at me, she says, my God, son, you look like a Holocaust victim. And I thought to myself, I have really dropped to the lowest levels of degradation. And I remember thinking to myself, if this is all there is, this doesn't satisfy. I need, I think I need God. That night, he went to a Bible study with his cellmates and gave his life to Jesus Christ. I remember inviting Jesus in, giving up my will for his, that exchange took place. I remember knowing that he would forgive my past and give me a fresh slate that was clean. And I knew that my commitment was a covenant. And I remember after I prayed that prayer, I just knew I was different on the inside. David founded a Bible ministry in prison while serving 20 years. Today, he's a speaker and pastor of an online ministry. He and his wife, Joanna, work together to help people find peace and hope. When we really give it all to the Lord, he'll take it and he gives us all of him in that place in return. Amen. You know, David learned the hard way. And I think a lot of us have to uh, take the school of hard knocks before we really get the lesson. You know, one of the things that I saw with David, and it, it reminded me of so many, that they take shortcuts, and they think that that shortcut is going to get them there faster. It actually just becomes a detour, and it keeps them in a pattern, in a circular pattern of dysfunction. You know, uh, the Bible says something so powerful in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. It says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You know, the heart is one directional. It could only face one direction at a time. And what David found out, he had to go all in with God. I wonder if that's where you are today. I want to get something into your hands because I believe in this new year, there is an opportunity for you to escape whatever you've been going through. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by, but I'm going to pray a prayer with you, and I want you to call that number after we pray this prayer, but you're going to say, Lord, I'm turning it all over to you. Jesus, take the wheel. Let's pray that prayer. Let's do some business with God. Jesus, I'm not willing to leave my life of dealing and holding on to the things in my own strength, but I'm willing to be made willing. I give you my personal permission 
for your heavenly intervention. Please come into my heart. Make me the person you want me to be. Father, everyone that has prayed that prayer, I pray now by the power of your spirit that you would even now cover them under your precious blood, but now make them into what you've called them to be in Jesus' name. Hey, 1-855-759-0700 prayer partners are standing by, but yay, today's your birthday if you've made that declaration and commitment. Up next, Rebecca shares how she was able to get freedom from the sex trafficking industry. It's a powerful story. Don't go away. He told me to get in the car and they'd show me the ropes and I said, okay. And I found myself in the backseat of a car being told exactly how to ask people to have sex with me and exactly how much money I had to charge them. My entire world flipped upside down on top of me. Rebecca was 17 when she got swept up in the world of sex trafficking. A few years prior, she had moved away from her strict Christian home in Texas where even God's love had to be earned. I grew up in this environment of having to perform. I had to have this perfect identity and always do what was expected of me. Which is why she kept secret the pain of life's traumas. Her brother's suicide, being molested at age 10 and raped at age 14 by someone she trusted. It didn't matter that I was doing what was expected of me. There was still terrible things happening to me. Felt like my only value to people was my body and what they could take from me. And just these repeated instances of men abusing their power and control over me. By 17, she had moved out, dropped out of school and was moving towards drug addiction, now living with her dealers. To pay her way, she worked at a strip club. I didn't know who I was. If you don't have a strong sense of identity, then you'll let anyone else dictate it to you. And I had all these terrible experiences telling me I was worthless. Rebecca needed hope, and for her, it came in the form of a cheap suit and a nice smile. The man promised her drugs, protection, and love. It doesn't take very much love and attention to make you feel valuable. Just the fact that he wanted me to come live with him that felt like I was worth something and that he saw what I was doing and he was gonna get me out of it. Prince Charming's facade quickly faded as he coerced Rebecca into prostitution. Fear and shame kept her trapped and silent. No idea what to do. These questions get you killed. You know, I remember after the first day thinking, how could I ever look my mom and dad in the face again? You know, how could I ever tell them what's happening to me? How would anybody ever understand? Rebecca would spend the next 10 years moving from state to state, a victim of sex trafficking. Her only taste of freedom came from her stints in prison. It was the first time in eight years at that point that I was able to sleep every night. You know, the first time I ate three meals a day and I didn't have people touching me that I didn't want touching me. My value was what people were willing to pay me for my body. At age 28, she would escape her trafficker's grasp when he was sentenced to two years in prison for tax evasion. Rebecca fled to Las Vegas where she met a new boyfriend and got pregnant. I knew I had to change. I knew I didn't want to raise a baby in that environment. I remember I was in the shower just crying and not having any idea of how I was gonna get away or what I was gonna do with my life when I did get away. For the first time in a long time, I started feeling burdened to pray. I just prayed for a way out. I just prayed for a way to change my life so I could raise my baby differently because I wasn't willing to change for myself, but I was for my baby. And I knew I needed God. I knew I couldn't do it on my own. A few weeks later in early 2012, 
Rebecca went home to Texas, where her family took her in with loving, supporting arms. Then at church one day with her family, she learned all she had believed about God was wrong. Learning a, a different version of God, a God that actually has a ton of grace for me, you know, and that, that loves me right in the middle of my mess and that I don't have to perform for. He wants a relationship with me in my deepest, darkest places. She soon accepted Christ and later that year gave birth to her son, Isaiah. Rebecca is now the executive director of Valiant Hearts, a ministry dedicated to eradicating sexual exploitation. And she no longer hides her past as she lives in the present as a child of God. I am his beloved. I have value simply because I exist. No matter how many times I mess up or fail or fall down, he's always there waiting patiently for me to look up to him and realize like, hey God, <laughs> I need you. Wow, look at what Rebecca's doing now. Here she is rescuing girls who have really coming out of the sex trafficking industry and she understands that journey. You know, just recently I spent some time with some young women and there was one young woman that was quite a bit younger than Rebecca. She was actually very new into the sex trafficking uh, business out of abuse and um, it was a very precious time for me to be able to just literally hold her face, be able to look into her eyes and tell her who she really is and how much God loves her. And you know, I was just struck in Rebecca's story that she needed a new view of God. When you understand who God really is, he is full of grace, he is full of mercy, his love is actually never ending, then it tells you who you are, dearly loved. And this is the, the truth that sets you free. Um, this dear young woman that I spent time with, I don't know if she's gonna take her steps of freedom, but she's surrounded by people like Rebecca who are willing to help her. Do you need freedom? Free indeed. That's what God does. He loves us so much. He sent his son. He died for you. No matter what your running is, no matter what your brokenness is, he loves you and he offers you new life and freedom. If that's you, I just want to pray right now. Just say, Father, I want to see you for who you really are. I believe, I'm choosing to believe that you love me. Would you make that truth a reality in my life? I trust you with my life and I want to follow you in Jesus' name. We have prayer partners ready for you right now. You just need to reach for the phone and give us a call. The number's on the screen. Call us right now. Don't delay. Don't, you know, put it off. Today is the day of your freedom. Scripture reminds us that God fearfully and wonderfully made us, it says in Psalm 139, that he adores you and he has every day of your life planned for you. Won't you trust him? Up next, Dr. Sasha High is back one more time with more inspiration and advice for healthy living. What do I enjoy most about what I do? Well, that's easy. I love connecting with people. Especially when someone says, I am so glad I can talk with you. I really need prayer. That's God's perfect timing. I talk with people all the time who want prayer for a family situation. Sometimes it's prayer for an emotional or physical need or even a financial breakthrough. It's so amazing that I can share about God's love and encourage people. I love this Bible verse. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is at work. I've seen him answer prayer. Won't you call today? 1-855-759-0700. God bless you. Hi, my name is Dr. Sasha High. I'm an internal medicine specialist and obesity physician. And over the past month, we've been talking about obesity as a chronic medical condition. We reviewed the evidence-based treatment options and dispelled some myths around this disease. Today, I'd like to talk to you about weight management expectations. 
Many people come into my clinic with very lofty expectations. They want to fit into clothing that they've held on to from 20 years ago, or they want to reach a certain target weight or size. I also see people frequently who have a history of what we call yo-yo dieting or weight cycling. They've lost 20, 30, or 80 pounds through crash diets or commercial programs, and then regained 30, 50, or 100 pound six months later. People are spending thousands of dollars on quick fixes that are enticing and hold promises of dramatic weight loss. But then they regain all of that weight and then some. And you know what happens? They blame themselves and think, ugh, oh, I failed again. When in reality, it's not the individual that failed, it's that they didn't have the right treatment. Remember The Biggest Loser, that TV show that showed contestants losing hundreds of pounds through intense dieting and exercise? Well, there was a study that looked at the contestants from season eight of The Biggest Loser and followed them six years out from the show. All but one of the contestants had regained their weight and some had gained more than they started with. But what was even more concerning is that six years later, their metabolic rate had decreased so much that the contestants had to eat 600 calories per day less than when they started just to keep their weight stable. So imagine this, you lose 100 pounds, then you regain 100 pounds, and now you need to eat 600 calories less per day just to avoid gaining more weight. It doesn't seem fair, does it? A few weeks ago, we talked about how your brain defends against weight loss. It's very sensitive to changes in body fat mass. So when you lose weight, your metabolic rate slows down and hormones responsible for appetites and cravings increase. Your body's really working against your efforts to lose weight, and that's why weight regain is very normal. It's also why we say obesity is a chronic condition. It's chronic because people will have to manage their weight their whole life. And while short-term quick fix solutions sound appealing, they're usually temporary and therefore linked to high rates of weight regain. Successful weight management is not about how much weight you can lose and how quickly. It's about how much weight you can keep off while still living a life that you enjoy. We call this your best weight. Here's the good news. Even if you only lose five or 10% of your body weight, that can have significant improvements on your overall health. It can reduce the risk of diabetes, heart attack, stroke, arthritis, and even death. It can improve your fertility. You may be able to reduce some of your medications. And finally, your quality of life is likely to improve. So it's important to recognize that the scale is only a small part of obesity management. We need to celebrate other measures of success like consistency in health behaviors, how you're feeling both mentally and physically. Are you sleeping better? Do you have more energy? Are you able to do activities that you previously were unable to do? These are all great indicators that your overall health is improving. Thanks for watching over the past five weeks. I hope we've been able to shift your perspective to understand that obesity is a real medical condition. And if you've struggled with your weight and you've been dieting and exercising and wondering why you haven't seen the results you want, please know that there are many other factors at play. But with comprehensive medical support, you can work toward your best weight and your best health. So don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about evidence-based weight management or find an obesity specialist who can support you in your journey. Weight management does not need to be done alone. I'm Dr. Sasha High. Thanks so much for watching. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. We're here to help you discover life. Lori, the whole day we've been talking about a way out. Mm. And isn't that wonderful? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and he is the life. So true, Brian. I mean, these stories of 
transformation. They're yes. so inspiring. And I've really appreciated uh, Dr. Sasha High, who, yes. you know, she's giving a way out for many people to find their way through health concerns and obesity issues. And, you know, yes. I just really enjoyed her teaching this month. It's been very helpful. One of the things I took away is your best weight. I really like that, right? Yeah. Instead yeah. of looking at the scale and constantly getting caught with that, you know, look at your best weight that you can continue to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. but also that you're healthy, because I think this is so important for us. And, you know, we believe that it's important for us to have healthy financial weight right. as far as in the ministry yeah. in order to continue to keep this message alive. That's right. And Pat Robertson's written a brand new book called 10 Laws for Success. And he addresses so many different areas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, laws, they're good things. It's like yes. the law of gravity, right? <laughs> But it guarantees it'll keep you down every time. So, you know, <laughs> this is going to be a great resource for us to help us in lots of areas yeah. of our life. Because holistic health, spiritual, emotional, That's physical it. is what God is interested in. We need you to be a partner. $20 a month or your best gift. Come mm -hmm. on the journey with us. Partner with us. Call us at 1-855-759-0700 and partner on this journey so we can get this good news out to more people across our nation. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your prayer report, praise, praise reports, but also mm -hmm. your prayer request. Man, I'm getting tongue-tied on that one. But <laughs> would you good. put on your prayer list, Gail, and she's praying for many of her family members to be mm. delivered and freed from the lies of the enemy. Mm, sounds like some tumultuous confusion happening yeah. there, right? Christine, believing God for favor and protection. Let's Why don't pray you lead us? All right. Well, Father, I lift up Gail's family to you, mm -hmm. and I just say, may the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We yeah. speak against fear, we speak against anger, we speak against dissension yes. in Jesus' name and that you would bring healing and unity into this family. And Father, you said in Psalms 512 that you are a shield of favor around the righteous. So for Gail and also for our viewers, we pray that you would be that favor upon her. It's not fair but it is fun, and it's hers. And in Jesus' mm -hmm. name we say, amen. Amen. Romans 12, one of my favorite chapters, verses 11 to 13 says, never be lacking in zeal, mm. but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That is so good. And be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Well, isn't <laughs> that a good word for today? It is. Until next time, God bless. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.